Live TV, and today I have got Rick Mofino with us. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Well, good. We, we talked to you earlier, and we just talked about your latest release rather than the release that's coming up. Yes, the new one is called The Panic Zone. It is a sequel to Vengeance Road, which, by the way, has been nominated for Best Picture Aboriginal by the International Thriller Writers. And that is so exciting. And when is that convention again? In July. In, in July. New York, yes. In New York. I want to be there. I still want to be there. It's going to be an exciting time. So tell us a little bit about the, the book. Is it a sequel? Yes. Then? Okay. Yes, The Panic Zone um, is the second in the series that features Jack Gannon. Mm -hmm. Jack Gannon. Readers first met him in Vengeance Road. He, um, he's from Buffalo, New York, and working for a fictional newspaper there, about real to the reader right. and real to Jack, um, called the Buffalo Sentinel. And he's sort of a, uh, a tragic figure in the sense that he you know, almost got a Pulitzer, almost got a better job, um, almost got married. He's the almost guy. This guy. Yeah. The bridesmaid. The bridesmaid. That was <laughs> the, the word I was looking for before, yes, the bridesmaid. Um, and Jack um, is in an industry that's kind of dying, in a town that also has its struggles from time to time. Mm -hmm. And um, he latches on to a story that um, seems to be just an everyday type story. I mean, in the sense, it's a homicide mm -hmm. of a broken-hearted woman, uh, a young woman who had a tragic life. But he finds a link that's disturbing in this case. And it takes him places. That's Vengeance Road. Mm -hmm. um, we meet Jack later in the panic zone when, um, well, he, he's working for a wire service, an international wire service based in New York City. Mm -hmm. and so he quits his day job. Uh, well, well, <laughs> well, let's just say he, 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 he's realizing something that he's um, strived for all his life, which was to work for a big news agency okay. where the world is his beat. The world and the U.S. is his beat. He can go anywhere. Um, cover anything uh, that they deem newsworthy and help out with the bureaus that they have around the world, much like established wire services that exist today. Right. And also, um, it's a metaphor for the industry. You know, they, um, they largely do um, online content, um, they serve other subscribers. So you might think of them sort of as a Jason Bourne with a laptop or a digital device. Ooh, I like Jason Bourne. Yeah, something like that, yes. Um, and uh, after a few months in New York City, he's not doing as well as he would like. He's, you know, he's facing some challenges. A little disappointed. A little disappointed. Um, but early on in the story, the book opens with um, a young couple in Wyoming who are having a, a weekend drive. They've been working hard. They're taking their new baby out for a picnic in the, you know, in the, in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. It's a beautiful spot. You know, husband's a carpenter, he's been working on houses, mom's a school teacher, the, the baby's a miracle, all is right with the world, right. until there's a tragic car accident. Mm -hmm. And the mom survives, the dad doesn't. This is critical to the story. And in the aftermath, in her shock, she's certain she saw someone rescue the baby, even though she's told otherwise that the baby didn't survive. She just cannot believe that Someone did not rescue the baby. Baby, and, and the experts tell her it's her way of coping. But in her heart, she knows. She never saw the baby, apparently. She saw something. Well, in, I mean, like a funeral or. Oh, or something well, like there that. was a service. Um, she's told to, you know, try to come to terms and that awful word closure and all of that. Mm -hmm. She just can't let go until she gets a phone call one night out of the blue from someone who tells her. And it's all connected to the story that Jack Gavin's working on in the Panic Zone. He's sent to South America to research the story behind the tragedy of a cafe bomb in which 10 people were killed in a, an attack in downtown Rio. Two of them were um, journalists with his wire service. Oh. And the first thought is that it was a, a narco drug attack and that they, uh, the reporter and photographer just happened to be there because it's near their bureau. We learned that they were called there to meet a source who had a story. And Jack Gannon picks up that story. Oh. So what we have um, and happening around the world are threads that are way out here coming together, okay. coming together. And you know there's gotta have some it's giant climax. There are there are there are there are important implications, the significant implications and and it sounds really emotional. 
It's emotional, and I did draw my own experiences from my own travels as a reporter. Mm -hmm. And from the time I was dispatched to some big cases um, far away, out of the blue, something's happened and uh, we need you to go now. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I use that to give, convey to the reader a sense of what it feels like to be dispatched and the clock is ticking sense. and a moment's yeah. notice and there's chaos that you're being parachuted into. Oh, I can't, I really can't imagine how that would be. But then writing the mother's feelings of knowing that her child's alive and yet everybody's telling her, it's all in your head, move on. That had to have been fairly emotional for you to write as well. well. Yeah, I really like that character and uh, I looked at real cases of, um, that were similar, um, you know, cases that certainly there was no doubt in other cases maybe where there was. And um, I wanted the reader to experience it with her. So whatever she's experiencing, the reader will experience and go along with her mm -hmm. and feel um, that they're in her corner, that the doubt is, is reasonable mm -hmm. from her point of view and the reader knows because the reader was there with her. The reader validates her the, feelings. Their, yes. Um, and, and I think everyone could feel that maybe they would be in her shoes, so to speak. And um, in the middle is how they come together, her and the uh, our self-doubting reporter from New York City, who's really a fish out of water, um, being parachuted into a country which he's never visited, into That's a culture funny. he doesn't know. Um, and uh, I think readers can experience that too, the fish out of water, the I don't know what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. and, being, and being told you don't know what you're doing here and yeah. the trouble he gets into as he finds that the story actually leads him to other points in the world as well. And being an international wire service, the one editor who's in his corner um, supports him in these travels and the reader goes along for the ride. Well, you know, one, one thing I've noticed is that so many of you thriller writers were reporters. Yeah, it's funny how that works. <laughs> funny how that works. Yeah, well, and some were some, well, I work for certain government agencies as yeah. well. So, CIA yeah, and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, military people and yeah, lots, lots of interesting perspectives on things. But I did travel in Kuwait myself, they did travel in Africa, so I do pull it in where I can. Mm -hmm. And um, that well, serves me well, of course. Well, yeah. It serves me well, and um, I did deal with a lot of families who had uh, lost people tragically. Mm -hmm. So I think all of that serves me uh, well, and I hope ultimately serves the reader well, um, because it's a, it's a pretty good story. Well, you are an international seller, so hey. Well, you know, that says something about your, you're connecting with your readers. Well, I like to think so. I've worked 15 countries now, eight languages. I'm um, you know, certainly not a record, uh, but, and a but good uh, one. I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there, and it's, it's quite nice. Though. Well, you're you're just too humble. And how did you like the the uh, the bookseller? Um, well, what's the that fair. called? The book fair. Thank book you. Fair. Thank you very much. Was book, that a lot of fun oh, or book chaos? Fair, or? The book fair was just book heaven. I mean, readers coming up to you and new readers coming up to you, it's just wonderful. It's That's a great way to discover a new author is in, in that book yeah, fair yeah, and as well. Lots of fun, everybody loves books. So. Oh yeah, well we just happen to think you're a really great guy <laughs> and thank you very much for coming back a second time and doing this interview on your other books so that the readers can much. learn more about the book coming out and it's coming out? It's coming out the 1st of July, it'll be all over uh, the U.S., all over Canada and uh, later on it'll be around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much.